हेलो फ्रेंड्स और नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज जनरेशन ऑफ सिंगल साइड बैंड और एस एस बी मॉड्यूलेटर फॉर द जनरेशन ऑफ एस एस बी वी हैव टू मैथड्स फर्स्ट मैथड इज कॉल्ड फ्रिक्वेंसी डिस्क्रिमिनेशन मैथड और फिल्टर मैथड एंड द सेकेंड मैथड इज फेस डिस्क्रिमिनेशन मैथड और फेस शिफ्ट मैथड इन फिल्टर मैथड वी यूज अ फिल्टर दैट हैविंग अ शार्प कट ऑफ फ्रिक्वेंसीज विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस filter we can eliminate the undesired side band whether it is upper side band or lower side band and in case of phase discrimination method we use a phase shifting network to achieve the same goal that is here also we eliminate the undesired side band whether it is upper side band or lower side band now we first discuss frequency discrimination method that is also called filter method this method basically consists of a product modulator that is a type of balance modulator and followed by a bandpass filter here we take a special attention to this bandpass filter which is specially designed for the generation of single side band the input of the product modulator is message signal and carrier wave and the output of the product modulator is double side band suppressed carrier and after passing through a band pass filter we get a single side band modulated wave that is s function of t so for the generation of single side band the designing part of band pass filter is most important as it pass the desired side band of double side band suppressed carrier and reject the other side band that depend upon whether the upper single side band or lower single side band is the desired modulation so from the designing point of view of band pass filter there must be a certain separation between the two side band this separation is wide enough to accommodate the transition band of the band pass filter and this separation is approximately equals to twice of f suffix a where f suffix a is the lowest frequency component of the message signal now we are going to discuss in detail for this we consider a speech signal the speech signal is a type of message signal and its spectrum having an energy gap that is centered around zero frequency so figure a is a spectrum of speech signal and there is a separation between the two side bands here the lowest frequency component of the message signal is f suffix a and here the energy gap is approximately equals to twice of fa here the positive side band is represented by a shaded area so the figure a is the magnitude spectrum of speech signal having some energy gap after modulation that is single side band and after passing through a band pass filter we can obtain upper single side band or lower single side band depend upon our requirement in figure a the spectrum of a message signal is centered around zero frequency and after modulation this spectrum is shifted to plus minus fc so the frequencies above fc we call it upper single side band and the frequencies below the carrier frequency we call it lower single side band so the figure b is for upper single side band and here we consider only a positive frequencies and the figure c is for lower single side band here also we consider only positive frequencies so we can say that in case of speech signal the band pass filter operates satisfactorily but it has disadvantage the design requirement of the band pass filter is limited to the speech signals that having a lowest frequency component approximately equals to 100 hertz but for video signals and computer data they have almost zero energy gap so the single side band modulation technique cannot be used for video signals and computer data here we represent a speech signal and its relative power spectral density 
Its lower frequency component is approximately equals to 100 hertz and there is a energy gap of twice of Fa that is 200 hertz. So the transition band of the band pass filter is so adjusted within this energy gap and we get a desired side band whether it is upper single side band or lower single side band. The second method for the generation of single sideband is called phase discrimination method. This method represents the time domain description of SSB wave. In phase discrimination method, we have two parallel paths. The upper path is called in phase path and the bottom path is called quadrature path. Each path involves the product modulator. And a sinusoidal carrier is applied to the two product modulator that are in phase quadrature. And this is obtained by using minus 90 degree phase shifter. As shown in figure, the sinusoidal carrier is generated by an oscillator. Here, cos 2 pi FCT is the input of the in phase product modulator and sin 2 pi FCT is the input of the quadrature product modulator. Both are a sinusoidal carrier signals but are in phase quadrature. Also in this method we use a spatial block that is called wide band phase shifter and designed specially to produce the Hilbert transform M cap T in response to the incoming message signal that is M function of T. As shown in figure, the message signal M function of T is the input of the in phase product modulator and its Hilbert transform that is M cap T is the input of the quadrature product modulator. And the output of the in phase path is M T cos 2 pi F C T while the output of the quadrature path is M cap T sin 2 pi F C T. And both the outputs are added by using a summer. For in phase output we use plus sign and for quadrature output we use minus plus sign. Minus for upper single sideband and plus for lower single sideband as per our requirement. Or we can say the role of the quadrature path including the wideband phase shifter is basically to interfere with the in phase path so as to eliminate the power of one of the two sideband whether it is upper single sideband or lower single sideband depending upon our requirement. Also in phase discrimination method we use a two modulator. Both modulator are different in their structures. So the output of the phase discriminator is SSB modulated wave denoted by S function of T and it is equals to AC by 2 within bracket MT cos 2 pi FCT minus plus M cap T sin 2 pi FCT. Here minus sign is for upper single side band and plus sign for lower single side band. And there is an advantage of using phase discrimination method. First advantage is it can generate the SSB at any frequency. Second point is it can use the low audio frequencies as modulating signal or message signal. And the third point is it is easy to switch from one sideband to another that is from upper single sideband or to lower single sideband. Now we have discussed the methods for the generation of single sideband or SSB. There are two methods. First is called frequency discrimination method or filter method and second is called phase discrimination method. There is a difference between these two methods. Frequency discrimination method is used for multi-tone SSB generation. Which means we can use more than one modulating signal having multi-frequency. But phase discrimination method is used only for single tone SSB generation. So this is a basic difference between the two methods. But there is a drawback of using frequency discrimination method or filter method. That we are going to discuss here graphically. First we consider an arbitrary message signal that is M function of T and its frequency version is denoted by capital M function of F. 
This message spectrum is centered around zero frequency and it is limited between minus W to W. The bandwidth of this message spectrum is capital W that is positive frequency. And to obtain the single sideband spectrum, we first consider the spectrum of the double sideband suppressed carrier. So after modulation that is double sideband modulation, this message spectrum that is centered around origin is shifted to plus minus FC. And in this spectrum of the double sideband suppressed carrier, the shaded portion is upper sideband. Now our requirement is to suppress the lower sideband to get the upper single sideband so we use a bandpass filter. Here the bandpass filter is adjusted such that it passes the upper sideband and suppress the lower sideband. For this the filter must be limited between FC and FC plus W. Here we represent the ideal bandpass filter as well as the practical bandpass filter. But we know that the bandpass filter is not ideal. The resulting output that is single sideband or upper single sideband contain the additional frequency component that is on the other sideband as shown by the shaded region. And because of this drawback, the SSB is limited only for the voice transmission or speech transmission. For example, we take a voice signal. The spectrum of the voice signal is shown in figure having low frequency component of 300 Hz and higher component of 3.5 kHz and it is centered around zero frequency. So there is an energy gap of 600 hertz and this spectrum is shifted to plus minus FC in case of double sideband suppressed carrier. To obtain the single sideband spectrum, we use a spectrum of the bandpass filter. So the double sideband suppressed carrier is passed through a bandpass filter and our requirement is to pass the upper sideband and suppress the lower sideband. For this, we adjust the bandpass filters within frequency range of FC plus 300 to FC plus 3.5 kilohertz. And after this adjustment, we get the upper single sideband frequency spectrum. So to transmit a message signal, especially a voice signal by a single sideband method, the band gap must be 600 hertz and this is adjusted properly between the sidebands so that the voice signal can be comfortably transmitted. But this is not suitable for the video signals and audio signals. And for the transmission of video signals and audio signals, we use another method that is called vestigial sideband or VSB.